classification of organisms can be done into various groups on the basis of the characteristics. Various biologists such as Ernst Haeckel, Carolus Linnaeus, Robert Whittaker, etc. have tried to put these organisms into broad categories called kingdoms. Now Whittaker, he proposed five kingdoms to put all the organisms present in the world. Since it has five kingdoms, this system of classification is called five kingdom classification. And the five kingdoms that he proposed are Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia. So these kingdoms they were divided on the basis of categories such as the cellularity, body organization and the mode of nutrition etc. Now in further classification these kingdoms they were further divided into subgroups at various levels. Let us have a look at these levels. So the broadest category that we call kingdom it has been divided further in some sub like in animals this sub level is called phylum whereas in plants this sub level is called division. So kingdoms are divided into phylum or division. Again on the basis of some characteristics the phylum they are divided again into class. Class again divided into order. So you see that there is a you know sub level going on here and it is happening on the basis of a set of characteristics. So the order. Now the orders they are again divided further into families. So the family again will be divided into genus and lastly the genus gets divided into the smallest unit of classification which is species. So we can simply call like kingdom, phylum or division, then comes the class, order, genus, family and finally the species. Now you might find difficult to remember this sequence. So for this I have got you a mnemonic which says keep pot clean or family gets spoiled. You confused what it is? Well, if you notice the first letter of each word signifies the different levels of classification. So this way it is easy to remember the sequence or the different categories of this hierarchy of classification. Now as we have seen that species is the smallest unit of classification so what all orga organisms belong to this species? Well, all the organisms which are similar and can breed belongs to the same species. These organisms, they usually have the same number of chromosomes or they have the constant same number of chromosomes. So this was the hierarchy of classification. Moving forward, let us see the detail of the five kingdom classification of Whittaker. So these are the various kingdoms. Let us first talk about the Monera. So Monerans, these are the small simplest structures. These organisms, they are unicellular. They do not possess a nucleus with nuclear membrane and hence they are called prokaryotes. These organisms may or may not be present. So like in some organisms the cell wall is present in others it is absent. Next if we see the mode of nutrition they can be found in performing both the type of nutrition that is autotrophic as well as heterotrophic. Now some of the examples of monerans are bacteria, blue-green algae or the cyanobacteria and mycoplasma. 
So these were some important characteristics of Monera. Moving forward, let us find out the next kingdom which is the Protista. This group of Protista, they are majorly unicellular organisms. So these cells, they have a very defined nucleus and hence they are called eukaryotes. Their cell do not possess a cell wall and their mode of nutrition can be anything like autotrophic or heterotrophic. Now some of the examples of protista are diatoms, protozoans and unicellular algae. The next kingdom that we are going to talk about is fungi. Fungi are simple organisms. They are mostly found to be multicellular but yeast is a unicellular fungi. Fungi again they are eukaryotes as they possess a well defined nucleus. They also have a proper cell wall but this cell wall is made up of a complex sugar called chitin. Now if we talk about the mode of nutrition in fungi they are heterotrophs. And in heterotrophs also, it is important to note that these fungi, they mostly feed upon the dead and decaying matter and hence they are called saprophytes. Some of the fungi can be found as parasitic also as they feed upon the living organisms. Next if you see, the fungi, they have a very unique property. They usually, some of them actually, they can live in association with some other kind of organisms such as blue green alga or what we call a cyanobacteria. So when fungi and cyanobacteria they live together they mutually help each other and this relationship is called symbiont. Now this symbiotic relationship between fungi and blue green alga is called lichens. Some of the most common examples of fungi are mucus, penicillin, mushroom, etc. Now let us see the second last of kingdom which is planti. This group of plants, it consists of the multicellular organisms. So we all are very well aware with the plants, right? So these are eukaryotic. They possess a cell wall which is majorly made up of cellulose. So you see that in fungi we said that the cell wall was made up of chitin but in plants this cell wall is made up of cellulose. Next if we see the mode of nutrition we very well know that plants are autotrophs. Now the plant kingdom it can further divide it into various divisions where we will see the different kind of plants. So the common example of plants can be mango, banana, rose and many other. Lastly, we will see the kingdom animalia. So the organisms or the animals they are multicellular. They are eukaryotes as well. They do not possess a cell wall and their mode of nutrition is heterotrophic always. Some of the common examples of animals are like dog, cat, cow, rat and many other insects as well. So this was about the five kingdom classification of Whittaker. Let us quickly summarize the basic characters of all these five kingdoms. So first if we see the cellularity in these organisms, we have seen that monerans are the only prokaryotes, rest all the kingdoms are eukaryotes. Second, if we see the body organization, we have seen that prokaryotes, that is the bacteria, these are unicellular. Next, the protista, they are also unicellular. Then from fungi to animals, all the organisms are multicellular. Next, if we find out about the cell wall, so in bacteria or let's say the monerans, the cell wall may, may be present or absent. In protista, 
the cell wall is absent. In fungi, again it is present. In planty also the cell wall is present, but in animalia the cell wall is absent. Next or the last characteristic can be the mode of nutrition. So the monerans and protista they both have both the kind of mode of nutrition that is both autotrophic as well as heterotrophic. Fungi they show only heterotrophic mode of nutrition whereas plant it shows only autotrophic mode of nutrition and lastly the animals they also shows the heterotrophic mode of nutrition. So student in this lesson you have learnt the hierarchy of classification right which is from the kingdom, phylum or division, class, then comes the order, then family, genus and species. We have also seen that Whitaker has proposed the five kingdom classification in which we have studied all the five kingdoms as monera, protista, fungi, planti and animalia.